Hi, in this video, I'm going to go over all of my cybersecurity positions I've held in my daily tasks that I executed on a day to day basis. I'll also be going over my thoughts on each one of these jobs, what I liked, what I didn't like, what skills I needed to succeed in that job. Hopefully by the end of the video, you're going to have a better idea of all of the cybersecurity careers and positions that you can take out there. If you are new to my channel, I'm Nicole, and this channel is all about helping you upskill and land a job in tech and go ahead and smash that like button right now. It really helps engagement and to thank you, I will show you a picture of my cat. In order to fully understand all of the cybersecurity jobs and careers out there, you're gonna to have to understand exactly what is cybersecurity. The CISP or the CISSP breaks it down into eight different domains. And those domains are security and risk management, asset security, security architecture and engineering, network security and communications, identity access management or IAM, security assessment and testing, security operations, and software development security. And each one of these domains has probably hundreds of jobs underneath it. If you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed when trying to figure out what type of job you want or where to start, that's probably why, because it's extremely broad field. And so the way I'm going to structure it is I'm going to start with my most recent position or the one I'm in now, and then I'll work my way back to when I, my entry level IT job that I started with. My current role right now is a lead web application firewall security engineer or WAF. So if you don't know what a, a web application firewall is, it is basically a band-aid for poor software security and coding practices because a lot of the times developers aren't able to change the code and it's actually very insecure. So you have to deploy a WAF or sometimes they're not able to or they don't have the resources to change the code. And so you deploy different security controls to make sure no one can hack in or and cause a breach of data. Essentially, I'm an engineer and I deploy, configure, maintain web application firewalls on premise and also in the cloud. On a day to day basis, it varies a lot. So some days I will be doing tickets out of the ticket queue because customers are having issues with a false positive that occurred due to uh, someone, maybe they're, they changed the code and now the WAF doesn't like it, or someone inputted something that, that triggered a alarm and then they're not able to complete their request. Some days I'll be configuring new sites and putting a new security policy on for their, their web application. Sometimes I'll be analyzing traffic and removing, removing false positives from various web application policies. And so sometimes you have to go through and tune for false positives if a lot of false positives are occurring. Sometimes they change the stack that their web app is working on. And so you have to go and reconfigure a new baseline. Sometimes I'll be creating and updating documentations and security diagrams or training material. Sometimes I will be developing, maintaining and testing and troubleshooting on-prem and cloud web application firewalls and rule sets. Sometimes I'll be analyzing uh, web application firewall traffic and tuning and creating remediation efforts. Sometimes I'll be evaluating applications to see if that they can have a web application firewall. Sometimes I'll be performing root cause analysis of different issues that are occurring. Actually, a lot of the time it isn't the web application firewall, but sometimes I still need to go in and troubleshoot the network uh, for this customer because web application firewall is kind of like the catch all and people just kind of send you tickets even though it has nothing to do with the web application firewall. So you do need to know how to also troubleshoot networks and read PCAPs and things of that sort. And some other job titles, a web application firewall engineer is known as is a security engineer. Uh, I've seen it as a SOC analyst, tier two and tier three, network engineer, uh, network security engineer. I've seen it as DevSecOps, even though I wouldn't say it's DevSecOps, it's kind of borderline. Um, cybersecurity analyst. The names are really vague and you always should look at the job duties and in an interview, ask exactly what you're going to be doing because oftentimes the job duties and the job title are totally wrong uh, from what the hiring manager and upper management thinks is going on. 
And some skills you need to succeed in this job is you need to have pretty good networking skills. You need to know the OWASP top 10 pretty well. You need to know how to read the logs and you also need to know how to read code because sometimes you're going to have to tell the developer what is wrong with their code and that they need to fix it. So there, Google is definitely your friend. I didn't have any coding experience before this job. Definitely have had to learn that. So reading code is a lot easier than writing code. And you need to have a good understanding of web applications. I wouldn't say that this is an entry level cybersecurity job. However, I would say if this was your first or even second job, you could definitely learn it pretty well within six months. My thoughts on this cybersecurity job is actually, it's one of my favorite cybersecurity jobs that I've ever held. Web applications are actually very fascinating and I'm always learning something new and it's not repetitive. I can't stand repetitive work and so this job definitely is not repetitive. My least favorite thing about this job is, I mean, you have to go through a lot of logs and sometimes there's just hundreds and hundreds of logs. And so just being able to manage that, uh, it does get a little bit busy and you have to like be able to go through these logs very quickly and figure out if it's a false positive or if it's actually an attack. And I've been in that role for about a year. And so my previous job before that, uh, same company, I was a network uh, security engineer. And here I was actually the first person on the contract. And so I basically led a team to remediate vulnerabilities on a network enterprise. And uh, if you don't know what a CIS control is or a STIG is, they're basically best practices for various devices. Whereas the penetration tester will go and find these vulnerabilities, there has to be someone who will remediate these vulnerabilities. And in this job, I was that person and there was a lot and there was tons and tons of devices. And so along with this, we were also trying to develop an automation to remediate them once you did all the research, because sometimes you had to apply these best practices to many different devices. And so we were also trying to develop an automation that would do that for you and do all the checks for that using Ansible, which is a configuration management tool and very popular in networking. However, that is extremely difficult because people with networking knowledge often don't have developer knowledge and people with developer knowledge often don't have networking knowledge. This was probably the most stressful job I have ever had in my life. Some day-to-day -day tasks is that I would research these security controls, research the device that I was going to apply it to and see if it could handle the configuration change without losing, like crashing or taking down the network. And oftentimes, even if you did research and you checked everything, you would still cause a crash, which is really bad because if you know what the CIA triad is, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Availability is a big one. So if you apply these configuration changes and it took down a network, these systems, if they were mission critical, sometimes the customer didn't know what was happening. It was just not a good deal. It was extremely stressful job. And so you really had to do risk mitigation by doing paperwork and documenting it. You had to make sure that you did a uh, peer review on every change. So if you're familiar with change management, that is an important thing. And that was probably half of my job was change management and making sure that the best practices, security configurations that were applied did not take down the network. By the way, smash that like button below right now. So I probably spent half my time on change management 25% of my time doing research on various STIGs and then reading STIGs and CIS controls and NIST 800-53, trying to figure out exactly what is going on. Probably 5% of the time I spent in meetings and the other 15% I probably spent creating documentation and because it was really important uh, because new devices could come online and then oftentimes no one would have that knowledge of how to fix it or any issues that they ran into. So you really had to keep really good documentation super important. And then I probably spent 5% actually making changes. 
because you do not want to make a change without proper research and your change management and documentation because this is definitely just a fireable offense. Taking down mission critical systems is just not a good thing, especially if the customer doesn't know what's going on. And for this job, this is not an entry level job and you really need a good grasp of networking and how it all works together probably my least favorite job I've ever held. And oftentimes you had to come in at weird hours because you sometimes you can't make changes during the day because if there's availability issue, then that comes back on you and it causes a work stoppage. And then you're, you just cost like people a lot of money because now you have employees that can't work. Weird hours, lots of change management. Uh, it's also a high visibility project because it's so important to have these uh, devices that are hardened. Some things that I did really like about this job is it was really research heavy and I really like researching. It's probably one of my favorite things to do. I could just research all day long. I would say to succeed at this job, you probably need a CCNP level networking knowledge. The job before that I had was a system administrator and this job was more of a security auditor. I had the title of a system administrator, but I didn't really do any system administration things. In this role, I basically audited different operating systems for compliance and I didn't remediate anything. Here's a CIS and then you have the commands. I basically just ran these commands on various operating systems to see if they were in compliance. And that is what I did all day long until later on they had me do vulnerability scanning. This falls into the GRC, Governance, Risk and Compliance. And I was basically just auditing systems to make sure that they were in compliance with the rules, regulations that were set place by the company. This is a fantastic entry level cybersecurity job if you are new to the field, because I really don't think it's like that much to succeed at this role. Uh, it's not difficult. Anyone requiring a college degree to do this or the CISSP is a little bit insane. You just check to see all day long whether or not like they're in compliance with your checklist. There's usually a checklist you go off of and if it is in compliance, you get to check and if it's not, it's not. And you may be thinking, well, can't this GRC or IT auditor position be automated? And the answer is, Yes, but if you're doing a third party audit, they're not going to use the automation built by the company to check to make sure that it's in compliance. They're going to go like one by one <laughs> and check every single security control that needs to be in place for you to be in compliance by hand manually. And some jobs that this can be named under is IT auditor, compliance auditor, security auditor, cybersecurity audit analyst, even a cybersecurity analyst, because it's kind of like the catch all phrase, GRC specialist, the list could go on and on, but always look at the job descriptions. And if you are trying to upskill, this is a really good place to start uh, because you only need, I honestly would say you need like a baseline of security plus in order to succeed at this job. It's not difficult at all. However, it is extremely repetitive and boring and you might kind of hate your life after a while. Great place to get your foot in the door though. The job I had before that job was a network administrator. And in this job, I, I did some security tasks. I troubleshooted, I troubleshoot, I troubleshooted various network issues on different systems. I made sure that some networks were encrypted using various devices. Uh, and I managed the keys that went along with that. I worked through an ITSM like ticketing system to make sure all tickets were resolved. I had to come in on the weekends if uh, the networks crashed and I had to figure out why the network crashed. Availability is really big in security. I had to install and configure and upgrade different like networking equipment. I administered accounts and network rights. This job was, it was like pretty entry level. It was a fun job. I also did this overseas in Turkey and that was pretty cool. It was very chill. So in this job, if you didn't have any tasks doing, you could definitely work in like, you could just study for certificates or 
trying to improve your skills and you you had a lot of downtime. A knock is often kind of slow. This is also a very good entry level cybersecurity and IT job is trying to start out in a network operation center because you're going to have a lot of downtime. It pays pretty well. So I would look into that. You really just need a baseline of like network plus really, and you could succeed at this job. Maybe a CCNA, but not 100% necessary. The job before my network administrator job, I was a simulation technician and basically kind of was like IT support help desk for uh, simulation games. So I set up the, the simulation game network and then software and computing games and troubleshooted it and talked to any customers and made sure everything was patched and updated. Uh, as for security tasks, I would say patching was probably the biggest security task that I did. And patch management is usually classified under IT, but very important uh, for security. And so also if you're looking into a cybersecurity job, look at patch management jobs because oftentimes they may be a little bit easier. Patch management, great way to get started in IT. And I think it's pretty entry level. I don't think you need that much experience to do it either. Um, so look at patch management. The job before that, I was an IT support specialist or 25 Bravo in the United States Army. And that I joined after college because I really just had no idea what to do. And I'm glad I did. I was basically IT support, desktop support, help desk for a division level uh, unit. And so I did user accounts and I checked people's like security clearances in JPass. So I was kind of like the ISSO also. I made sure all of the laptops were accounted for. So that goes under asset security. It's very important not to lose any laptops as you will not be able to go home if all of the equipment is not accounted for. Uh, I set up networks and I secured them in kind of like a field environment. I also worked with satellites and set up satellite different things. It was actually a lot of fun um, in the field where there wasn't just like regular electricity. So we had to use generators. It was, it was very interesting. I also did physical security stuff. So I was on guard duty and staff duty and I stayed up 24 hours to watch for anyone who was trying to break in physical security security is just as important as logical or technical security along with administrative controls which are super important too. And this job was good. I'm happy that I did join the army and went like the I guess grunt is what they call them. You know I enlisted instead of commissioning because what happens with a lot of officers is that they don't have any skills when they get out and then they end up in some like management position that they work like 80 hours a week. So I'm glad I went the technical route when joining the military. I also got a lot of different experience in a lot of different fields, which was really valuable. So some questions you're probably wondering is, do your degrees ever help you or did it help you land a job? And the answer for me is no, because experience always outweighs degrees. And I started off in the army after my degree as an IT specialist. So my degree helped me like none, except I started out as an E4 instead of an E3 rank. So I think I got paid like $100 more a month or something like that. Uh, and then after that, I got my master's in cybersecurity and information assurance about like two years ago. And that honestly, I mean, it helped me learn kind of like the broader picture, maybe a more valuable thing in my mind is cybersecurity certificates because the CISSP is literally on 30,000 job boards. And if I had spent my time studying for the CISSP instead of getting my master's degree, it would have been a higher leverage action on my part because now I procrastinated for like two years and it just kind of makes me cringe a little bit, but cybersecurity certificates to me are more valuable than degrees. However, if you have no experience, a degree can be helpful. I see a lot of job postings like put zero years of experience if you have a degree and three years of experience if you have no degree. I would say don't go into 50 to $100,000 in debt for a degree maybe just start at the help desk. And then from there you can gain experience and leverage your experience to get into a cybersecurity role. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. I do have a playlist that you can check out on a lot of different resources on cybersecurity. Also, I do have a playlist for IT if you wanna look at that. 
And I do have one for Cloud if you wanna look at that. Smash that like button if you're still watching. Thank you and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.